Ladies and gentlemen, this is one of those moments that reveals everything. Just hours before her disastrous town hall, Kamala Harris did something that crossed the line even with some Democrats that they won't defend. Using the office, the official vice presidential podium, not a campaign event, mind you, to compare a former president to Hitler. But here's what they didn't expect. The immediate and devastating backlash from Jewish leaders, military families, and even members of their own party. Now, check this out. Are you listening? Recent reports show drivers with dash cams are 60% less likely to be found at fault in traffic accidents, saving time and money on legal battles. This easy-to-install dash cam records every detail on the road, offering collision documentation, 24-7 security, and memorable drive capture. Featuring 4K Ultra HD night vision, 24-7 motion detection, and loop recording, it's a must-have for enhanced road safety. Visit CarVisionX.com to get free express shipping and several bonuses with every order during their late summer special, or I should say fall. We're in fall now, aren't we? Yeah. All right, let's jump into it. So this was all breaking uh, news. So we got to unpack this madness. When I watched this clip here, I, I, I was looking at it closely and I realized that she was standing at the vice presidential podium, clearly in a campaign speech which is a direct violation of the Hatch Act. Let's let's listen to what she had to say. We've got lots of reaction in this from all corners. So let's first set the stage. Best. So yesterday we learned that Donald Trump's former chief of staff, John Kelly, a retired four-star general, confirmed that while Donald Trump was president, he said he wanted generals like Adolf Hitler had. Donald Trump said that because... He does not want a military that is loyal to the United States Constitution. He wants a military that is loyal to him. He wants a military who will be loyal to him personally, one that will obey his orders even when he tells them to break the law or abandon their oath to the Constitution of the United States. In just the past week, Donald Trump has repeatedly called his fellow Americans the enemy from within, and even said that he would use the United States military to go after American citizens. And let's be clear about who he considers to be the enemy from within. Anyone who refuses to bend a knee or dares to criticize him would qualify in his mind as the enemy within like judges, like journalists, like nonpartisan election officials. It is deeply troubling and incredibly dangerous that Donald Trump would invoke Adolf Hitler, the man who is responsible for the deaths of six million Jews and hundreds of thousands of Americans. All of this is further evidence for the American people of who Donald Trump really is. This is a window into who Donald Trump really is from the people who know him best, from the people who worked with him side by side in the Oval Office and in the Situation Room. And it is clear from John Kelly's words that Donald Trump is someone who I quote, certainly falls into the general definition of fascist who in fact vowed to be a dictator on day one and vowed to use the military as his personal militia to carry out his personal and political vendettas. Donald Trump is increasingly unhinged and unstable. And in a second term, people like John Kelly would not be there to be the guardrails against his propensities and his actions those who once tried to stop him from pursuing his worst impulses would no longer be there. Tried to stop him. Did you hear what she said? They tried to stop him. He's the commander in chief and his word is an order that cannot be refused. <laughs> and no longer be there to rein <clears throat> him in. So the bottom line is this. We know what Donald Trump wants. He wants unchecked power. The question in 13 days will be, what do the American people want? Thank you. Mm -hmm. And she walks away. 
So my immediate reactions were this. Hatch Act violation, spreading disinformation, Trump out of context, justifying violence, runs from questions, desperation, nasal Karen speak, overall weak sauce. Now, even if Trump did say that, it's meant to be interpreted as he wants uh, members of the military who are going to follow orders and listen to his agenda and not try to derail him like the deep state does. Okay. Well, there's lots of reaction from this. Uh, Here's also, here's Joe Biden. This was uh, just a day before that. Bizarre. It sounds like I said this five years ago, you'd lock me up. We got to lock him up. <laughs> so, yeah, and then he goes, politically lock him up. Sure. Yeah. Is that what you really meant? So we got Glenn Beck's reaction. We've got um, some Obama stuff. Here's this is, Let's go to Josh Hawley, because what he said is um, pretty astounding. I mean. Yeah, it is. It's desperate, number one, and it is dangerous, Sean. I mean, I listen to this and I think, what are they trying to do? Encourage the next assassin? I mean, is it not enough that we've already had two very credible attempts? I mean, heaven's sake, Trump was shot. I mean, they shot him in the head. We had a second assassin who had a clear shot at him on that golf course. It's a miracle he's still alive. An innocent American is dead who went to that rally in Butler, and now they're still talking about him being Hitler and inflaming this rhetoric inflaming the crazy people on their side? No, it's incredibly, incredibly dangerous and irresponsible. Kamala needs to knock it off immediately, and she needs to apologize to the country. She should apologize to Trump, of course, but she should apologize to the country for being such a negligent leader, derelict in her duty. Here she is encouraging right. violence. She's encouraging it 12 days before an election. 12 days before an election, encouraging violence. Here is uh, former Vice President Pence's chief of staff, Nick Ayers, reacting to the General Kelly remarks. And I want to ask you two very quick questions, if I can. What dynamic did you witness between President Trump and these generals? And, And did it change over time? Well, that's such a that's such a broad question. There are a lot of them. He he was revered by the military at large, especially uh, the rank and file, you know, heroes who served this country. Uh, he was revered and he honored them and he he uh, respects them and loves this nation. Uh, you would expect with any president and chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff and a cabinet to have disagreements. But it was simply that on debating uh, what is the best outcome for the American sure. people. What is what is in the best interest? So there was obviously heated conversations of which as, I was part, whether it was expect. over NATO yeah. or free trade. Yeah. Right. But the notion that he would say something like this and it be kept quiet, one, for anyone to actually have this information and keep it quiet for that long uh, begs a bigger question about their own character. The notion that they set on it for four or five years is, is reflective of how preposterous okay, okay. it actually is. Yeah. Yep. The whole thing is preposterous. It is all made up. Senator Marco Rubio has some thoughts. And it's not even that can't happen. They know we're going to win. That's why they're going crazy. Their campaign at the end is not even about them. You won't even hear her say anymore. This is what I would do as president. It's all attacks. It's all viciousness. It's all it's it's all nastiness because they have nothing to run on. They know we're going to win because they know you're behind us. They know we're going to win here in Arizona because they know you're here behind us. But the way we win is if you go vote and everyone you know that agrees with you goes to vote and everyone who doesn't agree with you tell them the elections next two Wednesdays, the Wednesday, the day after. That's a joke. Is there media here? That is called a joke. You've got to vote. You've got to get everyone you know to go out and vote. And honestly, vote as soon as you can. Just vote as soon as you can so that you can spend the rest of your time getting people out to vote so we will wake up that Wednesday morning and we will be able to say, thank God our president is once again Donald J. Trump. Thank you and God bless. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Uh, we've also got reaction from Marjorie Taylor Greene on those Hitler remarks from Kamala Harris. At the- On my way over here, I watched a video. I watched Kamala Harris standing at the vice president's residence in Washington, D.C., at a podium with the vice president's seal in her official capacity. 
And she was giving a speech and she was calling President Trump a fascist. She was calling him Hitler. And she was referring to a piece in The Atlantic where John Kelly supposedly, after five years of not saying anything, decided that two weeks before the election, he would come out and say things that Donald Trump supposedly said in office. These people are all the same. Yeah. It's the same playbook. It's the same game. It's the same garbage. It's the same media. It's the same mainstream fake news crap that we have been hearing for eight years now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And Kamala Harris claims she has the audacity to lie to the American people and say that Donald Trump would turn the military on the American people, that Donald Trump would weaponize the power of the federal government against its political enemies. But let's be very clear. I'll be like Kamala, let's be clear. You know, I'll, I will be clear. There is only one regime that has turned the federal government against its political enemies, and that is the Biden-Kamala Harris regime in power, and Steve Bannon is in jail right now. Well, he's getting out next week. I can't wait to watch War Room. <laughs> oh yeah. Did you hear this? This is uh this this was just six hours ago. Here's Tim Walls in uh North Carolina. It's their enemies. Look, I I don't say this lightly because I, I didn't in my sixty damn years, I didn't think I'd ever see a candidate for president praising Adolf Hitler's generals or talking about using the military against their enemies and Percy, I mean this is it, it's pretty stunning and I said look I recognize I'm on the top of his list but don't kid yourself you're somewhere on that list too if you disagree yeah, with these right. people that's who they are look I wow that's the language that's coming out of the Harris Walls campaign and of course we covered this last week, but it needs to be brought up in the context of these things because they're saying that Trump's going to go ahead and use the military against the American people. Well, that DOD directive that we spoke of last week, DOD directive 5240.01, gives the Pentagon power for the first time in history to use lethal force to kill Americans on U.S. soil who protest government policies. So who really is talking about unleashing the military on the U.S. citizenry. It's not Donald Trump. It's actually codified into DOD directives in the Biden administration. So they're getting ready for potential unrest at this election. If you remember in that last report we did on this very topic, they were talking about Republicans on MSNBC. They were claiming Republicans were going to burn down polling stations. Okay. This they're, they're, they're trying to gin up all of this fear in their own base and probably pull a Jussie Smollett at one of these uh, polling places. You know, they're going to run over there with MAGA hats and torches and they're going to scream, this is MAGA country, right? And then, you know, of course, we're going to find out later it was all Kamala Harris supporters. And then they can go ahead and unleash this directive. October surprise from Biden and uh, Kamala. Remind me again, who acts like Hitler? Ashley St. Clair says, if you can afford to feed your family and wondering how Kamala Harris is going to help you, don't worry. She just held an emergency three-minute press conference to call Trump literally Hitler and then went back inside. Here's Karine Jean-Pierre stating that Joe Biden believes Trump is a fascist and a dictator. Disgusting. And to be praising Adolf Hitler is dangerous, and it's also disgusting. So just to be clear, when you said we do agree, President Biden believes that Donald Trump is a fascist. I, I mean, yes, we have said. He said himself. The former president has said he is going to be a dictator on day one. We cannot ignore that. We cannot. Uh, and... 
we cannot ignore or forget what happened on January 6th. And to be pre- can't forget what happened on January 6th. And this whole dictator on day one, he said that on a with uh, Sean Hannity. And he was simply speaking about how he was going initi- to initiate executive orders to start drilling again for oil, to shut down the border. And it, it, talk, it was all tongue in cheek. But of course, it's taken out of context. They do that to Trump all the time. And then they just run with that narrative until it's just beaten. So uh, we've also got, here's another, okay, so here's, um, this is the Trump campaign actually responding to her desperate press conference. Kamala Harris is a stone cold loser who is increasingly desperate because she's failing and her campaign is in shambles. This is why she continues to peddle outright lies and falsehoods that are easily disproven. The fact is that Kamala's dangerous rhetoric is directly to blame for the multiple assassination attempts against President Trump, and she continues to stoke the flames of violence all in the name of politics. She's despicable, and her grotesque behavior proves she is wholly unfit for office. Stephen Chung, Trump campaign communications director. She's a stone-cold loser. I believe we also have President Trump's reaction as well. I'll see if I can track that for you, too. Um, We've also got, um, let's hear what, let's hear what Glenn Beck has to say. Uh, All kinds of, let me show you something that happened today. And this is where it takes a dark turn. We have uh, all kinds of terrorists that have come in from our open borders. There are rumors that uh, weapons of mass destruction have been smuggled across our borders, shoulder fire rockets. We have Iran and Iranians that are here in the, in the um, country that wish to kill Donald Trump. And now we have people thinking that he's Hitler. But they haven't stopped. This just happened today. Watch. So yesterday we learned that Donald Trump's foreign leave. This is the vice president's Kamala Harris. uh, I've never heard anything like that. Um, I find that absolutely amazing. Now, I want to show you how propaganda works. When I first heard this, somebody said, have you heard the Kamala Harris uh, quote that she just gave? I think she gave it in front of the White House. Well, it's not the White House. I believe this is the vice president's uh, mansion. But notice the picture here. The picture is Kamala Harris in the middle with the two presidential Mm -hmm. mics and the seal of the vice president of the United States, the American flag and the flag of the vice president. This is an official, this is not a campaign. This is the United States vice president informing you that Hitler is on the way. (sighs) Will they not stop at anything? Controlling elites especially those at the helm of the propaganda industrial complex, think this way. And don't think it's a mistake. They have all of the experts, like Cass Sunstein, nudge. They have behavioral scientists behind all of this. You are being played like a cheese in a maze, like a piece of cheese in a maze, and you are the mouse. Earlier this year, a Rasmussen survey divided respondents between elites and the general public. They defined elites as Americans who have at least one postgraduate degree and earn over $150,000 a year. They also polled a separate group of what they called super elites who were graduates of Ivy League and other elite colleges. Here's what they found. 47% of elites and 55% of super elites believe the government allows Americans, quote, too much individual freedom. Mm. Now, this is uh, astounding. What has happened to the liberal part of a liberal left? Wow. And we've also got reaction. I still can't believe she said it. I I guess I can believe she said this. Because, well, here, let's, 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 let's go to the Trump reaction direct. Okay, this is 
Donald Trump, he posted this on X. Comrade Kamala Harris sees that she's losing and losing badly, especially after stealing the race from crooked Joe Biden. So now she's increasingly raising her rhetoric, going so far as to call me Adolf Hitler and anything else that comes to her warped mind. She is a threat to democracy and not fit to be president of the United States. And her polling so indicates there's president Trump reacting directly. Um, I do have, let's see here is okay. Here is, um, Oh, okay. Here's Scott Jennings. Here's CNN. This is what they said on CNN about this in this country, right? It probably will shock Kamala Harris and the rest of her campaign staff to learn that there are incumbent Democrat U.S. senators in this country right now running television ads touting all their work with this modern-day Hitler. I wonder if Kamala Harris tonight in our town hall meeting will call for them to take these ads off the air touting their work with this Hitler. I mean, if, if he were really Hitler, if he were really a threat to democracy, not a single Democrat in this country would be running ads touting their work with Donald Trump. Now, it probably will shock So a lot of fallout from this statement that she made. And I think what's most shocking is she did it in an official capacity. So like I said, when I saw this initially, I watched this and I said, okay, what's she saying? I heard she said it. So I started looking for it. And then I see the video and I see that she's standing in her official capacity. Now, this is normally what you consider campaign rhetoric. But the fact even Glenn Beck brought it up, she's saying this in her official capacity capacity. This is the vice president's office declaring that Hitler is on his way. (laughs) Unbelievable. I think this is only going to have further implications. Here's Pierce Morgan. I can't believe he said Kamala's playing the Trump Hitler card is so lame. It's one of the many reasons she will lose. (sighs) Even Pierce Morgan knows the truth. So consider this, a sitting vice president using official government resources comparing her political opponent to Hitler. Marjorie Taylor Greene said it perfectly. This this kind of rhetoric could get someone killed. But here's what I want to know from you. Is this desperate move a sign that they know something about the polling that we don't? Drop your thoughts in the comments below and let's decode what's really happening here.